Hey guys, Wilson from On The Move here. Kelly is behind the camera, so she's participating today, and we've got an installation video. So I got the solar bug, and I decided for the um, upcoming summer that we're gonna have some solar power, and we need to go ahead and do this project. So it's actually early spring, and I wanna get this done before the summertime, so it gives us a little more opportunity to boondock while we're out west this summer. So what I've done is I have decided to go with some 200 watt solar panels uh, from Rich Solar. And I purchased mine from Walmart. They have the best price and the best deal overall on these. And, and solar panels are everywhere. There's all types. You got the 100 watt, 200 watt. I like these. They'll fit on top of the fifth wheel very nicely. And so they come nicely packaged uh, box. They've got protection on the end. There's some cushioning here on these 200 watt panels. So I bought the panels and then I bought the Renogy uh, Z brackets here. And so I'll show you how we're gonna install these. I've already got a few pre-installed. I'll show you how we're gonna install them. We're gonna do a complete wire up and installation on the roof of our fifth wheel. Stay with us. All right, before I go any further with this install, I do want to put this disclaimer in here. I am not a professional. I'm not a professional electrician. I'm a teacher by trade and I like to do projects. And so I've learned research. There's a lot of great videos out there on wiring, a lot of great videos on solar. And this is just a real simple video on installing these panels if you're interested. And I just want to say that this project, if you've got some handy skills, you're, you're a decent person with following instructions. You can figure this out, you can do it yourself, and you can save yourself thousands of dollars by installing yourself. Now, if you're not confident, please, by all means, hire a professional because you are dealing with electricity, you're dealing with something that could potentially uh, set your camper on fire, and depending on where you are, it could set other things on fire. So I'll just say all that, and now let's get started. So what I bought were the Renogy Z brackets, MTS-ZB. So it comes with four brackets in here, and it comes with two sets of screws. These are the screws that you'll use to install onto the roof of the camper. And then these are the bolts, nuts, washers, lock, wa lock nuts, or I'm sorry, lock washers in here that are gonna help you install the Z brackets onto the frame of the solar panel. So what I've done is I just laid this on top of my freezer. If you got a workbench, great. Um, I've got a piece of cardboard underneath to protect the face. I've left the cardboard under here, so I'm not putting any pressure on the solar panel itself. Always check your inventory. Sometimes you might have a miscount. I did have one of these sets that had a miscount here, but luckily I had some extra washers around, so I was able to take care of that. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna install these uh, brackets, and these are Z brackets, real easy to install. And you'll see that it's got a little lip here on the side. They're just gonna fit right over this hole here. And these panels have a number of holes. There's about seven or eight different holes on here. See, so you've got the ability to install it in any way you need to. So the way we're gonna do this, there's a washer into the, onto the bolt. I'm going to put that in there. We're going to then put another washer. We're going to put our lock washer. And then we're going to take the nut and secure it. One piece of advice, do all of this while you're on the ground. Um, I, this would be a real pain to do while you're on the roof of the camper. Okay. Plus, with a um, membrane, roof you want to make sure you take care of that membrane and it's less chance that you're going to damage the membrane make sure this is tucked up nice and tight against the frame here and then we're going to tighten all this down we'll repeat this for all four we'll be ready to make our layout on the roof and i'm going to do that with some cardboard cutouts So we're going to wire these in series parallel. I'm going to put two panels together and then wire those in and then two more and then two more. So I've got 
Um, actually six total panels, 1200 watts of solar panels are going to go on the roof. These particular panels produce about 9.8 amps per panel in theory. Of course, you'll never get exactly that uh, type of power production out of a solar panel, but these are going to get us started with being able to boondock a little bit more. Um, so what we're going to do is mount these on the roof, but I'm going to go ahead and I pre-ordered some wire. So these are connectors, our MC4 connectors. We're going to go ahead and connect these up as best as we can down here, <clears throat> down here. So it's a little bit less to do up on the roof. I'm also going to go ahead and install these so that we can prevent any kind of overload. So these are an MC fuse, has a male and female end. The fuse is already included. This is a 30 amp and um, the, there's extra fuses in here if you need them. They do come with those extra fuses. So those are quite handy. You can get all of these on Amazon and I'll try to drop some links down below. Um, one thing I will tell you is to comparison shop. So eBay has a lot of good vendors. Amazon has a lot of good vendors um, out there for solar. And then of course you've got your big folks like AM Solar. They are very, very helpful and quite a few others out there who can help you figure out how to do all this. A lot of knowledge out there. There's a lot of know-how on YouTube, on Facebook about what you're doing. Ask questions. People are very, very helpful in figuring out how to do this. So in series parallel, my fuse is going to go on this positive side. I'm going to go ahead and install this directly onto the panel. These just snap in. You have to kind of force them in there. There's a nice little O-ring and boom, that's a nice waterproof connection there that's going to last. So the way that these are rigged up, this negative side is now going to connect to the positive side of the next solar panel. And then that negative side is going to be attached to the negative wire here, positive to the positive. And then we're going to run this all to a combiner box where I can maximize the input. And the reason I want to do series parallel with these is so if we end up with a little shade over one panel or you have an issue with one panel, it won't drain the whole system. If you wire these all together, then you won't gain as much power and you could have an issue. If you have one panel uh, go bad, you have something in your control uh, module here inside of the panel go bad, then all of a sudden you're out of power and you're going to have to rewire while you're out on the road. If I lose a panel here, okay, I've only lost two total panels. I've still got four panels producing power, so we can still move on. So you just have to figure out what kind of uh, system you want to put on your rig if you're going to do this. Positive to positive. And then we're going to hold on to our negative because we'll hook this other negative up to the next panel. All right, so one of the easiest ways to do this and not be up here moving panels around because you want to be on the roof, you know, really physically moving stuff as little as possible just from a safety aspect. And if you don't feel confident, again, get a professional to do this, but take the cardboard boxes that the panels came in, cut them, and those are pretty much the same size as the panels. So what this is going to do is it'll give you the chance to kind of lay out, play around with it without having to move panels around on the roof. Just being smart. Work smarter, not harder, right? And so what I've done is I've laid out my panels. I've made sure that all of my wires are going to reach where I need them to reach. So I need them to reach where this particular um, combiner box is. So I'm going to go into a closet in our bathroom and that's going to be an easy spot for me to drill a hole in the roof that this is the worst part of this solar hookup and i'm going to go in right through this box make waterproof connections and i'll be able to make all of my connections into the box all right so one other thing i've already done is i've already installed my victron energy smart solar 150 100 uh, mppt solar charge controller so I've got this in place. I've already wired it into the system and I'll talk more about the system in another video, but I'm ready to go as far as control, um, charging. Now I just have to get my panels on the roof installed, run my wire down, and then I'm going to install a cutoff switch from the panels just before I get to the solar charge controller. That way I can stop that energy flow 
if I ever have an issue or I need to work on this or need to do something, that's just a real smart thing to do is to put that uh, on that positive line coming from the solar panels up on the roof before you get to the controller. All right, so now we're in the underbelly here in our storage area. And what I'm gonna do is run my wires from the solar charge controller through the hole that I've made in the wall. I'm gonna run it down this wall, connect it, and then up so I can screw it directly to the uh, floor. It'll be nice and secured. Now I'm gonna run through the bathroom. So if you see this pipe here, I'm going on the other side there and there's a closet directly above in the corner of the bathroom. That's the best place I can hide this and keep my cable length shortened because you do want to shorten cable length. The longer your cable is, the more solar energy you're going to lose on its way to that solar controller. So I'm gonna run two gauge wire. That way I'm gonna maximize the size of the wire and try to control or keep as much solar power coming into this control unit to charge my batteries. All right, so what I'm doing is I'm taking a seven eighths inch bit here and I have already drilled these holes here so I can run my tubing through. Um, that one's not too pretty, so I should have moved this way, but I can fix that. <laughs> and then I'm gonna drill up from underneath so I can run that tubing with the wire all the way through. And then now my next hole is the rough one, okay? This is the one that I'm scared about, but I know what to do here. <laughs> so I'm gonna take this drill, I'm gonna drill, and then I'm gonna get the tip right here just where it barely goes through into the roof and I'll stop. That way I can go up top and then I can drill down and I won't tear my membrane up. Be real careful when you do the step. Oh, yep, 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 yep. I got it. Got it? Yep. That was very close to my foot, okay. All right, yep. All right, so we have had a successful time drilling this hole. This was the most nerve wracking thing is coming through this roof. I did not want to tear my membrane more than what I did. So what I did is I had um, Cody come up here and he watched for the tip coming through. He told me when it did. And then I came up here and then I started drilling from this side. And that way I made a really nice clean hole. So what I'm gonna do is use a little bit of butyl putty right around here and then this you can see the combiner box has a hole. We're gonna put it right over there. And then we're gonna be able to uh, seal it all up. So I'm gonna put a little seal underneath it. It's gonna screw down and I should have a total waterproof connection here. And all my wires will come into this box. It's a nice service box. And I have a couple of bus bars in here that I'll hook all my panels up to. All right, so what I've decided to do is go ahead and take a piece of uh, this tape and we're gonna go ahead, this is uh, our roof tape, and you can buy, there's different brands of it, Endura Tape, Endura Bond is what they call it, um, but you can buy different versions of it. So I bought some four inch, and I'm just gonna run a piece right over this hole. I'm gonna seal that down pretty good. And once you attach that, it, it's not going anywhere. I'm gonna go ahead and Cut my hole back out so I can run the wires down through here. I'm going to take my box and I'm going to fix this box. So I decided not to use the butyl tape here and decided to use the Endurapon instead. So I've run my Endurabond tape here. I'm gonna screw this combiner box down to the roof and we'll be ready to begin to wire everything up. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take in on top of this Endurabond, I'm gonna put a, four screws in for the combiner box. Combiner box comes with a couple things, butyl tape. Um, I decided I'm not gonna use the butyl tape here and it comes with four screws. You do have to order your connectors uh, separately, but they're very, very cheap through AM Solar. And a shout out to them, they have lots of diagrams, videos, um, tons of help if you need it. 
So we're gonna go ahead and take this die core. We're gonna put it exactly where my four screws are gonna go in. Can't really overuse die core personally, I don't think. We're gonna go ahead and go around this right here. box is pretty waterproof is waterproof so I feel pretty good about it I'm gonna go ahead and put this down all right so now we're gonna screw our combiner box down just using these screws that came with it I've already pre-drilled the holes into the combiner box don't want to over tighten these just make sure they're secure in the roof So our box is in, so now all we have to do is wire everything up, put our panels together. All right, so we've got our panels on the roof. Um, it is really, really advantageous to get somebody to help you out with these. We've got them up, and we've got them positioned in a place where we're going to mount them. And so they come with screws. These are nice wood screws that are going to hold it in place. They have a washer at the top. I'm going to go ahead and take some die core and I'm gonna squirt underneath where the hole is going to be. And again, uh, die core, I don't think you can use too much. So that's gonna come down and then we're gonna put this screw right through that die core. All right, so the panel's ready. I've already put die core under all four of these corners and now we're just gonna use these screws that came with it to screw it down. So I'm trying to go into one of the rafters right here just to make sure I got a good connection. Um, this is good plywood underneath our, our OSB board and so these screws will hold it in place. Here we go. All right, so we're just gonna repeat the process and we'll get these affixed to the roof and then we'll be ready to wire everything up. All right, so I've got the panel screwed down to the roof and what I'm gonna do is come back across with more die core. So I'm gonna come across the top of this screw that I put in place. We wanna make sure we don't have any leaks at all. This is self-leveling. and it'll take care of any leak issues. So we now made our final connections here. We ran some two gauge wire from our solar charge controller, our black to the black side of the bus bar, our red to the red side of the bus bar, and we've got our connections complete at this point. So now we're going to reinstall the cover, tighten everything down, and then we'll check our solar charge controller to make sure everything's working. All right, so one of our last steps here in this solar install today is for our combiner box. So what I've done is I've gone ahead and taken the bus bars and I have hooked up our panels here and uh, we have one more wire to run. We can run that through the hole in the roof under the combiner box it'll run down and up to the solar charge controller and that'll be my last connection and then we will have power uh, for our batteries so one more thing i'm going to do though while i'm up here i want to make sure that these wires are stuck to the roof i don't want them flopping around because that could damage the wires and uh, hit a solar panel or something with the connectors 
So I'm taking some Endurbond tape and I'm just taking small strips and then I'm going to take it and I'm going to use it to secure these wires into place. I've used some electrical tape to tie my wires together just to keep them from flapping around and not having to use so much Endurabond. All right, so we've got our final installation complete up on the roof and everything is wired up, ready to go. All we have to do is flip our breaker, we'll have power and can charge our batteries from this solar on the roof.